Hi, this is Matt of the EXT Scheduler team. Uh, it's time for another webcast to bring you up to speed on what's going on with the Gantt chart. Uh, I've spent the last w week or two trying to bring the Gantt up to uh, an acceptable beta stage and uh, I feel like I'm, I'm almost there. So what I want to do right now is to kind of walk you through what's in, in, in the Gantt chart uh, feature-wise and uh, hopefully maybe uh, get some feedback from you guys saying what's important and which features matter the most and uh, what you would like me to to add to the to the Gantt chart uh, in the in the near future so looking at this uh, screen here um, you have two types of items you have the milestones and the regular bars and when you hover you see the dependency terminals and uh, you get a little highlighting um, and uh, it supports pretty much everything that the scheduler does in terms of drag and drop, uh, resizing, and then all those basic features. Um, also, uh, you have a, a, a label uh, for the le to the left and to the right, and you can map those against any field uh, in your store. So, here I've uh, I've labeled it the the left label to the title, and uh, the right label is being assigned uh, to a field that I call the responsible user field. Um, further, we have uh, the percentage done field, which indicates the level of uh, completeness, um, and, and all these can uh, can be edited in line here, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, there's also a duration here, which is uh, also editable. So if I change here, you notice it says seven days, and if I drag drop, you see it updates because it's reading off the store. And uh, so the, the most important thing uh, when talking about a Gantt chart, I would say, is uh, the possibility to work with dependencies. And as you can see here, the arrows uh, are all here. Um, and uh, if you want, it's all CSS here, so you can change around and pick your favorite color here. Um, and it updates right away. Um, so, and currently, uh, all types of dependencies are supported, like start to start, start to end, end to start, and end to end. And, so, and how this works is that you click, and when you click, all the other terminals uh, are, are, be, are, are shown. So you can hover over and you see uh, the, check box, the check mark like this, and you can drop it, and it creates an arrow. And I can do start to start. You can pretty much do any any type of uh, of dependencies. And um, here's another uh, plugin widget that's controlling uh, the column width, which could be pretty useful if you have a lot of columns. So you can see you can just drag this. If you want really big, high resolution, you can zoom in. See the bars are pretty long. And you can go back, make it a really tight view. And there's also a button for fitting the columns into the visible view area. So if you click that, the the horizontal scroller uh, goes away. So you're able to fit a, uh, quite a large amount of data. Here it's showing uh, seven weeks. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, there's inline editing for pretty much everything. So if I double click here, uh, I can set a new value, hit enter, and you see it's just reading off that store, so this is automatically updated. Um, and the same goes for this field. It's also double, double click and edit and uh, new guy. Uh, and that automatic, uh, automatically just updates uh, the field values in the store. And then on this side, in, in, in the locked, locked part of the grid, you, you have the opportunity to uh, set a new number of days. You see that automatically updated, updated, and here's the date picker. So this starts on the seventh. Let's change it to nine, and it moves auto automatically. You also have the a little spinner field here, so you can change the, the percent done right away in line. And you also have a double click here, of course, uh, and you see that brings the updates here to the field. So another fun feature uh, that could be useful 
is uh, the ability to to collapse and expand these guys right here. Uh, you might not want to show all these three to uh, like kind of optimize the horizontal uh, space usage. So I added a uh, expand collapse button here, so you can get some more out of, more action out of your uh, of your screen. And uh, I think that's kind of useful having having those uh, collapsible and expandable. Um, the last important thing that I'm going to show in this webcast is uh, how you interact with the items, uh, except for drag and drop uh, and uh, resize. Uh, I built in a context menu, with which which will have some some basic items such as delete event, edit left label could be useful for some reason, uh, and reordering is also one of the things that I think will be useful in the end. So. Here uh, you have the ability to move a task up one level, and you can move it down, you can move it down, you can move it that one down again, and so on. You can play around whichever way you want. You can also add a task before or after. Uh, so now you create a new task using the same start date, and you can just double click and say uh, my new title, and that's uh, and then you can just drag it to whatever length that makes sense for you and automatically connect it to events and start working right away. Um, so in terms of feature, this is what I have right now. The only thing that's left uh, is, is the uh, the hierarchical grouping feature, which is, uh, I would say, 50% done. And then I would really like to hear uh, what features matter to you and um, what what you would like to to see in uh, in, the, in the upcoming 1.0 release, which I'm hoping to have ready early February. Um, and also, if you're interested in in, in being a, a beta tester of this, uh, please drop me a line. My email is mats at ext-scheduler.com. Thanks. And bye.